In a desperate attempt to survive, many work multiple jobs. They may steal, lie, or embezzle. So stress producing to the average person. Worries about rent, losing their job, can't pay off the house. On a bigger scale, the profit motive creates a ruthless cycle of devastation. Illness, pollution, and war are accepted as normal. But it does benefit the few at the top who live parasitically by the manipulation and control of money. Taking on nearly religious proportions, the established monetary institution exists as one of the most unquestioned forms of faith there is. How money is created, the policies by which it is governed, and how it truly affects society are unregistered interests of the great majority of the population. And whether we are aware of it or not, the lifeblood of all of our established institutions, and thus society itself, is money. Therefore, understanding this institution of monetary policy is critical to understanding why our lives are the way they are. Now, so far we have focused on the market system. But this system is actually only one half of the global economic paradigm. The other half is the monetary system. While the market system deals with the interaction of people gaming for profit across the spectrum of labor, production and distribution, the monetary system is an underlying set of policies set by financial institutions which create conditions for the market system among other things. It includes terms we often hear such as interest rates, loans, debt, the money supply, inflation, etc. And while you might want to pull your hair out listening to the gibberish coming from the monetary economists, modest preemptive actions can obviate the need of more drastic actions at a later date. There are really only two things anyone needs to know about the monetary system. One, all money is created out of debt. Money is monetized debt, whether it materialized from treasury bonds, home loan contracts, or credit cards. In other words, if all outstanding debt was to be repaid right now, there would not be one dollar in circulation. And two, interest is charged on virtually all loans made. And the money needed to pay back this interest does not exist in the money supply outright. Only the principal is created by the loans, and the principal is the money supply. So, if all this debt was to be repaid right now, not only would there not be one dollar left in circulation, there would also be a gigantic amount of money owed that is literally impossible to pay back for it does not exist. The consequence of all of this is that two things are inevitable. Inflation and bankruptcy. As far as inflation, this can be seen as an historical trend in virtually every country today and easily tied to its cause, which is the perpetual increase of the money supply, which is required to cover the interest charges and keep the system going. As far as bankruptcy, it comes in the form of debt collapse. This collapse will inevitably occur with a person, a business, or a country, and typically happens when the interest payments are no longer possible to make. When I say money is issued as debt, I mean they don't get that money from anywhere. They actually create it out of thin air and create a credit in my bank account and poof, there it is. John Kenneth Galbraith in his book Money, Once It Came Where It Went, says this. He says, the process by which money is created is so simple that the mind is repelled. And it's true. When I tell people how money is created by banks simply by making ledger entries, uh, they just can't believe it. The simple fact is, and it's very, it's an uncomfortable fact for many people to realize that if all the debts were repaid, then all the money supply would simply disappear. There would be no money. And that would mean a complete and total collapse of the economy. If everybody were to reimburse their debts, if that were possible, that everybody does reimburse their debts, there wouldn't be any money left. In fact, there's more debt than money available. 
And the reason is that interest is not created. The catch is that they want more repaid than what they've given me. When you go to a bank and borrow $100,000 to buy a house, uh, they will check whether you are a good credit and uh, then they will decide to create the money, entering it electronically in your account and say you have to bring back $200,000 in the next 20 years. The $100,000 of the first loan is created. The second one, the interest rate is not created. So they send you in the world, compete with everybody else to bring in the second $100,000. That's how the money is kept scarce. It is through the competition between the different players for interest that is not created. So there's always less money than is necessary. Okay, and it's done systemically. If you go to a bank and you borrow money in the circulation, if the bank decides to approve your loan application, they will make two entries on their books. One is they will take your note, let's say it's a mortgage note, and that will be an asset on the books of the bank, and they will offset that with an equal deposit to your account, which is a liability on the books of the bank. So the money creation process is as simple as that. But the bank does not create the interest that you're going to have to pay year by year by year uh, until this mortgage loan matures. So where does that interest come from? Where does the interest come from? <laughs> I have to find that. Well, it has to come from some other loan that was made to someone else. So you have this uh, inherent deficiency in the money supply. Not everyone can repay what they owe to the banks. At any given time, there is more owed to the banks than exists in circulation. Which means, inevitably, someone is going to lose the game. Someone is going to go bankrupt, and that has nothing whatsoever to do with the quality of the goods and services or the efficiency of the business. Nothing at all. Everybody in the economy is vying with everyone else to avoid defaulting on their loans to the banks. And the only way they can do that is by competing with one another for an inadequate supply. So it's like a game of musical chairs. It assures that there must be some losers, regardless of how competent they are in conducting their business. The money we get when we receive a loan is called principal. Our debt, however, is not discharged when we repay the principal. Bank loans are all made on the condition that people pay both the principal and the interest the bank charges. However, money can only be issued as principal. No one creates the interest, so the amount of debt owed is actually far greater than the amount of money there is to repay it. It's crazy. Sometimes it worries me because, you know, um, what if there was like a collective uh, understanding about how phony the money is when it comes down to it? What would people do? You know, would they riot in the streets? Who's propagating? Who's propagating the, the illusion behind the money? Um, what... That just pisses me off, actually. 